I'm so embarrassed for you. Now you drive a parachute. Dumbest thing ever. It takes two days to go 100 miles. I'll stick with much more efficient and cleaner gas power. These are some of the comments I've received on my solar charger for my Tesla. So let's go over the top eight or so complaints and criticisms of my system. Okay, so probably the, the most commented criticism was that the system covers up my taillights. And you can probably see in the first video that the lights there, I did install uh, separate trailer lights, which do the blinkers, the braking, the hazards, everything you would need uh, to basically see the car at night and in during, during the day. Um, second to that is covering up the license plate. So what you can see in this photo is that I have since mounted the um, license plate on the frame of the solar rack uh, and it can be visible while driving. Now what I didn't say uh, was that you can actually drive with, this, with the panels lying flat. So originally my intention was to drive with the panels lying flat when I had the much larger uh, uh, basically rooftop panels on the, on the system um, and uh, it works perfectly well. So. Yeah, so here's the car with the panels basically in the horizontal position. Uh, you can see that you know this is essentially how this bike rack is designed to hold three or four bicycles um, in this exact position. So you can put it in this position, you can twist the lock, uh, and yeah, you can drive around. In fact, this is how I initially transported all the panels, uh, the commercial panels around uh, to get them home to do the build. Um, is it more aerodynamic? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, but you can see that, you know, that's sort of how the panels would lie. Um, don't really extend beyond the edge of the car, but now you have sort of a a little wing in the back that probably isn't good for aerodynamics. So for now, uh, just leave it folded up. Yeah. So it's it you know it adds more torque on the tongue, and so once I got the smaller um, Renogy panels, you know I figured that I can drive around with this thing straight up and down. Okay. Next question number two is how long does it take to fully charge? Well, the answer is fairly simple. Uh, it's a kilowatt system, more or less, as in, it, in its existing state. So, it, you know, the panels themselves are around 1.2 kilowatts and add, you know, 20% inefficiency due to conversion um, from DC to AC and then back to DC. 20% is, is realistic. Uh, it can be worse than that on a hot day where you're using the... Um, the uh, the coolant inside the car to keep it at 105 Fahrenheit. Um, so if you just assume that it's roughly one kilowatt of power going into the car and it's an 88 kilowatt hour battery, then yeah, it's going to take 88 hours of really good sunlight. So given that you have right now at least, you know, we have 12 hours or so of pretty good sunlight. So um, I think the thing that people don't realize, and maybe I didn't state, is that this thing is designed to basically charge my car for my commute. So I can drive to work, I can park the car in the back parking lot where nobody parks, I can unfold it either in the parking lot or in the dirt. Um, nobody's going to be back there, nobody's going to be tinkering with it, uh, and basically it can just sit there and, and you know not bother anyone. Okay, so the third question is, what is the range that you can add? Well, okay, it's a little complicated, but roughly the system, as I said, is around a kilowatt. Um, so if you get eight hours of sunlight and you're putting in eight kilowatts of power, that's right around, call it 10%, maybe a little less than the total battery. And if the car is rated at, I think, 330 
um, uh, miles, then that's roughly 33 uh, miles per day of, of um, capacity. So my commute is somewhere around 22. So, you know, on a good day, um, which are most days here in the west, the southwest, uh, yeah, it, it basically recoups what I drive to work and back. Um, and then in addition, you know, our family doesn't use the Tesla on the weekends. We use our bigger car. Um, so, you know, I charge my car at home additionally off my uh, PV system at home. So if I'm doing extra runs during the week, um, or you know picking up kids outside of my normal commute then uh, then yeah I can add to the to the charge um, significantly using my home PV system and I think you know what people don't really realize is that you know this is a battery this has a significant amount of capacity and most people are used to you know running your car empty and then going to a gas station and you know filling it up entirely Whereas with a PV, it makes perfect sense to just top it off. So you don't go to the gas station and you know add one gallon of gas, which is 33 or so kilowatt hours of energy to your car five times a week. That you know is inconvenient and doesn't make sense. So with this, you basically just unfold it, and you know people don't want to do that, but that's uh, you know to each their own. But yeah, you unfold it and top it off, give it, you know, an equivalent gallon of gas um, in terms of mileage uh, per day, and you essentially never have to go to the, quote, gas station. Another popular question was, why is there a battery in your trunk? Okay, so for those of you who are not familiar with off-grid solar systems and solar inverters, you typically need a battery or a AC source to power the inverter uh, prior to sunlight hitting your solar panels and then you know powering whatever it is that you're trying to power. So for most of these off-grid systems you need either a 12, 24, or 48 volt battery that you connect to the inverter and then in parallel with that you have a maximum power point tracker or charge controller which is then going to take your DC power from your solar panels and step it down in voltage to the DC voltage of the battery. Okay, So you've got your power coming in from your solar panels and power being drawn from your inverter and then the inverter subsequently turns that DC into AC which then plugs into the car. And then, yes, it's very inefficient because you've got those conversions. And then, in addition, the car itself is turning AC back into high voltage DC so that it can charge the 400 volt battery or so in the Tesla. Okay, so the next uh, question that I got a lot was why not just put flexible panels in the car? take them out and then use them that way. Well, there's a few reasons why I opted not to use flexible panels in the car. Yes, you could buy a slew of 100 watt flexible panels, which are quite a bit smaller. You could all, you know, you could stack them nicely in the trunk. The issue then is not only how to fold them up while they're connected, um, but also wind. So um, when you're pulling out panels and laying them on the ground or doing whatever you're going to do, you really have to remember that it's that any little bit of wind will, will pick up these panels and, and turn them into sails. So if you have the panels, you could you know theoretically stake them into ground, but then how do you do that on asphalt? Um, you know, how do you do it on a wide variety of terrain that you may be, you know, unfolding your panels? Uh, so you know, I, I basically decided not to do flexible panels. I do have a friend who's making a system um, with rigid panels. So they're smaller 100 watt rigid panels with glass. Um, they have a smaller frame than kind of your normal panel. Um, and you know, he can fit about 600 watts into his car. Uh, a little bit more with a few additional flexible panels. You know, I wanted something clean, I wanted something fairly consistent. Um, and ultimately I decided on the flexible panels with a rigid frame around them and that rigid frame is critical to 
you know, basically being able to drive around town with them and then also, you know, managing the unfolding and folding process um, uh, in addition to wind. So, um, you know, at this point, the six panels plus the panels that are Velcroed to the roof are providing enough power to charge the car. Um, granted, it's very low, uh, but, um, you know, at, I think I will venture into an additional method that that ties uh, both flexible panels and these, uh, you know, framed flexible panels together uh, in a way that I can, you know, basically double or triple the power out of the of the of the system. Okay, another comment was this is going to get stolen. Uh, yep, yeah, so it could definitely get stolen. Um, you know, the, the rack itself has security bolts in it that, you know, you basically have to have a special tool to be able to take it off. If you do take it off, you got to kind of know what you're doing. Otherwise, you're, you know, you could theoretically get zapped as you're unplugging things. Um, it's an issue, uh, but so far so good. Um, and, you know, I think uh, I'm not too worried about it. You know, it'll be covered by insurance or whatever and, and um, you know, potentially covered by insurance. Uh, and yeah, I don't think it's too much of a concern. Okay, so a few of the comments said, why not just make a trailer? So I planned on making a trailer from the get-go. Before I put PV in my house, uh, before I made this system, I said, I really want to build a solar trailer. And with a trailer, you've got a lot more real estate. You can unfold things. You can slide things out, maybe. You can articulate them. You can angle them. There's a lot you could do with the trailer system. My main issue with the trailer system is that I don't have room to put the trailer um, anywhere. Uh, I could park it in the driveway, but then I can't get my car in the garage. Um, and I certainly don't want to, you know, hinge and unhinge a trailer every day. So, you know, it, it took me a while until I found that one-up bike rack that really enabled the design. Um, you know, it's super strong and uh, it basically articulates in a way that I needed it to so that it can fold up um, so that I can fit the car in the garage it can lie flat uh, so you can actually drive with it flat if you wanted to to improve the aerodynamics or you can lay it down like you see in the in the previous video and you know basically unfold your panels that way and so yeah a trailer is a great option um, <clears throat> there's certainly issues with <clears throat> excuse me there's certainly issues with the added weight of a trailer so you know you can get a small trailer that you know ranges between like five to eight hundred pounds and that's a significant amount of weight compared to you know the roughly 200 pounds that I've added with the PV system um, uh, 250 with the battery or so so um, you know, I, I think ultimately this system was working pretty well in terms of what uh, my personal desires to, to, uh, for this uh, setup. Okay, so probably the biggest complaint aside from the taillights was now you're driving around a parachute or you killed the aerodynamics of this car. Okay, so as you can see from this image, um, I um, reset my trip odometer uh, when I installed this. So I've traveled over a thousand miles, that includes city driving, highway driving, interstate driving, um, many, many days of driving. And you can see that it's averaging um, 267 watt hours per mile versus the previous 257 watt hours per mile. So that's about a 4% increase in watt hours per mile. And that's not bad. Um, you can kind of tell that, um, you know, from the images and the video that that the edges of the panels do, in fact, kind of extend over the fender wells in the back. Um, but it's actually not that bad. And I, I do appreciate that so many people do um, appreciate the importance of aerodynamics in the back of your car, not in the front of your car. But this design is not too bad. Uh, Four percent really isn't, you know, is is totally manageable, especially when you can simply leave your car, you know, plugged into the sun uh, for four percent longer to recuperate that extra mileage loss. 
And then lastly, I'll, I'll add a, a few comments um, on some suggestions. So one of the suggestions was add wheels to the hinge area so that it makes it easier. Uh, I've done this. Um, the answer is it does make it easier, but it also makes it a little trickier. So um, when, you're, when you're folding it up, the, the hinges can then now roll, so it makes it a little bit squirmier when you're kind of folding it up. But it definitely does help unfolding it. Um, they're currently not on, but I do plan to, to add them back on and you know make it a little bit better. Um, the second was people were describing why don't you make it, uh, you know, change your hinges and basically make your panels come up and then fold up on top of the car. Okay, that's a cool idea, uh, and you know, I would actually love to do that because then it acts like a carport and does shade the car and you know probably would you would not need to use the over uh, overheat protection. Um, nearly as frequently because all that heat would sort of be, you know, basically trapped above the car and then there would be airflow in between. The problem is, uh, comes down to wind. So again, um, you know, if you had legs that basically unfolded down and you had this huge uh, canopy above your car, I can imagine the wind would be a serious, serious issue. So. The framing is stiff, but it's not that stiff. So even if you, you know, were able to tether kind of the posts that are coming down and maybe you know tie them to the wheels somehow or something like that, so that it's, you know, it's not going to physically blow away, there will still be a significant amount of uplift possible as the wind is blowing. Um, and this is something that you know, uh, it's important for any PV system, uh, whether it's on your roof, but especially in a canopy system where you have you know, really <clears throat> on an unobstructed access for the wind to kind of, you know, turn your, your solar panels into an airplane wing. Um, in addition, I, I, you know, it's hard enough to unfold these panels when they're lying flat on the ground, much less uh, sort of being extended in the air. So I could see it being really tricky to not totally destroy your car um, while folding the panels up. You know, they're, they're light, but once you add them up, they're not that light. So, um, you know, maybe someday uh, I can look into that kind of a design, but I don't think uh, it's gonna work uh, as, as easy as people think it might.